Hello, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a VPC with public and private subnets. We'll be using this architecture to create our VPC and it is a three tier architecture. On the first tier, we have a public subnet in two different availability zones. On the second tier, we have a private subnet in two different availability zones. And on the third tier, we have another private subnet in two different availability zones. We'll be using all the information on this architecture to create our VPC. So to start, let's go to the management console. The first thing we need to do is select the region where we want to create our VPC. To select your region, come to the top right hand corner and select the appropriate region. I want to create my VPC in the US East one. So I'll select that. That's the first step. The second step is to create your VPC. So under service, come down to network and content delivery select vpc then we'll select the vpc again and select create vpc we are going to give it a name tag i'll call it demo vpc we'll give it a cider block and it is going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 16 we are not going to assign an ipv6 cider block and it is going to be a multi-tenancy, which is the default. We'll click create VPC. That's the second step. So we'll close this. So we have our VPC here. There are two VPCs now in our region. To filter, you can select a VPC here. I'll refresh. So my new VPC is showing. I'll select, select a VPC and my demo VPC. I'm going to select it and now it is just going to filter it to everything in my vpc i would mention that when we create this vpc it also created a route table for us and by default this route table is private we're going to be using this route table later on but i just wanted to mention it so again i'll select my vpc and we have our demo vpc Next, we need to create an internet gateway and attach that internet gateway to our VPC. This is how the instances in our subnets are able to have access to the internet. So we'll select internet gateways, create internet gateway. We'll give it a name. I call it demo IGW. Create and close. So if I come to the internet gateway, you can see our demo internet gateway, but right now it is detached. You can only attach one internet gateway to a VPC. So now we want to attach this demo IGW to our VPC that we just created. So select it under action, attach to a VPC and select the VPC, which is our demo VPC. That's the only VPC that does not have an internet gateway. That's why that's the only VPC that's showing here. Select it and click attach. And now we've attached the internet gateway to our VPC. Now instances in our VPC would have access to the internet. Next, we would create our public subnet in two different availability zones. We'll come down on the left side, select subnets and let's filter this to just show our demo VPC. In our demo VPC, you can see there is no subnet in there. We'll select create subnet and tag name. Let's call it public subnet one. In what VPC? In our demo VPC. Availability zone. This is very important. We want to put it in the first availability zone. So we'll, because of the region that I'm using, I will select US East 1A and the CIDR block is going to be 10 dot o dot o dot o slash 24 so that's the side of block i'm using and i'll click create subnet close remember we need two public subnets so select create subnet again and this will be public subnet 2 and we'll select what vpc we are creating it in in our demo vpc availability zone preference now we are going to select US is to B, which is the second availability zone. The previous one we select A, the second one we select B. And for the CIDR block, it is going to be 10.0.1 slash 24. 
o slash 24 and click create close and now we have two public subnet and you can see one is in US East 1 availability zone and one is in US East 1B availability zone. Good. The next thing we need to do now is modify the IP settings on this public subnet. So when we create an instance in it, for example, it will automatically assign a public IPv4 address. So to do that, select, select the subnet, select action, modify auto IP Let's make sure this is checked and click save and we will do the same thing for this second one again modify select this and save good so that's the next step in the next step we would create a public route table then we would create a route for that route table then we will associate that route table to our two public subnet. On the left side, select route tables, create route table, and let's give it a name. We'll call it public route table, and we want to create it in our demo VPC, and click create. Close, and we have our public route table. Select the public route table, so make sure you're selecting the public route table. And on that route, so down, come down on the route, edit route, and we're going to add route. And we'll add route to 0.0, .0 which is this, which is anywhere on IPv4. And the target is going to be our internet gateway. And we can select our demo internet gateway. And that is how we add a route to our route table and click save and click close so what that does is the difference between a public subnet and a private subnet is a public subnet has an internet gateway attached to its route table which is what we just did so now any subnet we associate with this route table is going to have access to the internet now let's associate it with our two public subnet come to subnet association we can see the two public subnet here click edit subnet association and we'll check this too and click save we have now associated our two public subnet with our route table and you can see it here so we have the route which has an internet gateway and we also have a public subnet association which has the two public subnet good the next step is to create our private subnet so we will create four private subnet let's come back to subnets create subnet and the first subnet is going to be private subnet one up tier we'll select our vpc in the demo vpc the preference for availability zone we will put it in us east 1a and for the cider it is going to be 10.0.2.0 slash 24 and click create close we'll create another subnet it's going to be private subnet two and it is up tier. We'll select our VPC. Availability zone preference. Now we'll put it in US East 1B. And for the CIDR block, it is going to be 10.0.3.0 slash 24. And click create. Close. We'll create two more private subnet. Create subnet. And it is going to be private subnet 3 for our database tier. We'll select the VPC. Availability zone preference, it is going to be in US East 1A, the first availability zone. And the side up block is going to be 10.0.4.0 slash 24 and click create. Close. We have three private subnet now. We need one more. Create subnet and it is going to be private subnet 4, database tier. We'll put it in our demo VPC. Availability zone preference, US East 1B, and the CIDR block is going to be 10.0.5.0 slash 24, and click create. Close. And we have all of our subnet. We have two public subnets, two private subnets for our app tier, and another two private subnets for our database tier. And you can see our CIDR block. One thing, notice that our CIDR block is different. So you can have overlap inside the block.
So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. The next thing we need to do is create our route table for our private subnet. On the left side, select route table, create route table. Remember I said when we created our VPC, it created a route table for us and this route table is private. We need to create two route tables for our private subnets because we will use the default route table that was created for one of the two private subnets in the first availability zone and we'll create another route table for the other two private subnets in the second availability zone. So let's create the route table and we will call this route table private route table one and select the VPC we want to put it in in our demo VPC create close. We have our private route table one here. When we select it, come on the route, you can see it has a local route, which means it would only route traffic in your VPC and it does not have an internet gateway attached to it, as opposed to our public route table, which under its route has an internet gateway. So that's the difference between a public subnet and a private subnet. A private subnet does not have an internet gateway attached to its route table and a public subnet has an internet gateway attached to its route table. So that's the difference between the two. The next thing we need to do is we need to attach this private route table to our private subnets in the first availability zone. And to do that, select this route table and on that subnet association, edit subnet association and we want to attach it to the subnet, the private subnet that has 10.0.2. So let me look for 10.0.2, which is right here. And it's private. I can't see the full name, but I know the side that is 10.0.2. And the other one is 10.0.4, which is this. I'll select those two and click save. Now we have as associate those two subnets in the first availability zone to our private route table one. So for the second route table, anytime you create a VPC, it would create a default route table for you. And for the default route table, if we do not associate a subnet with a route table, by default, that subnet will be associated with our main route table. You see, it says yes, yeah, main for main. So our main route table, which is created by default, let's say we didn't associate any of those subnet with this private route table one, then it would be associated with our main route table, which is private by default. So now all we need to do is rename this route table. We can call it private route table two. Now let's associate it with the two private subnets in the second availability zone. On the subnet association, edit subnet association, and we want to associate it with the route table with the subnet that has the CIDR block of 10.0.3 slash 24. And we also want to associate it with 10.0.5 slash 24. Click save. And now our VPC is completed. And that is how you create a VPC. In this VPC, we create a VPC, created an internet gateway, public subnet and private subnet, and add the specific route for the public and private subnet. And this is a continuous tutorial. So in the next one, we are going to create a NAT gateway. So the instances in our private subnet can have access to download packages from the internet. We are also going to launch an EC2 instance in our private subnet and learn how to SSH into our EC2 instance. So we're going to be doing a lot of things based on this architecture. Um, I'll stop here for now. Thank you. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.